They're genuine UAPs, UFOs. So I was always fascinated by this footage. It just chilled in the sky, hovering, not moving for an hour straight. Know what a Tic Tac is? It's a giant flying propane tank. It's been said it's probably the most credible UFO sighting in history. Do you believe that our government is in possession of UAPs? Absolutely, based on interviewing uh, over 40 witnesses over four years. And, and, and where? I know the exact locations, and, and those locations were provided to the Inspector General. I actually had the people with the first-hand knowledge provide a protected disclosure to the Inspector General. It might actually be the very same craft, separated by many years. Welcome to ZD27. I'm John Rasmus Houston. In this episode, episode three, I'm going to talk about the UFO hearing that just took place July 26th. I went to bed early, got up super early to watch it because my time, it started at 7 a.m. Two hours and 18 minutes long. I watched the entirety of the entire UFO hearing and I was fascinated. I think we got some really cool stuff. It was all official, okay? Whether you believe the witnesses or not, specifically David Grush, whether you believe in him or not, he was under oath. So he was risking a lot by being under oath. It wasn't just a News Nation interview at this point. This was a meeting with an official oversight committee in Congress, so it's a little bit different. It's on the record, it's filmed, here it is. David Grush said he talked to about 40 people and they all confirmed there is a secret UFO crash retrieval program. And there is pieces, if not fully intact, non-human intelligence craft in the possession of private aerospace companies, which are contracted with the government, specifically the Department of Defense, and it's the Department of Defense's job to deny everything. That's just their thing, all right? It's what they do, okay? Um, Roswell, 1947, happened, okay? It happened. It wasn't a balloon. It wasn't dummies. Lieutenant Colonel Jesse Marcel said he picked up a piece of metal at Roswell, 1947. He said he was one of the first on the scene. Uh, he wasn't the cowboy rancher that discovered the scene, but he was the first military personnel on the scene. Lieutenant Colonel Jesse Marcel. He said he kept his mouth shut, but in 1980, on the show In Search Of, they drove out to the site. He picked up a piece of metal about two feet by three feet wide. Not particularly huge, but you know, about yay big. And he said this piece of metal was as thin as the tin foil in a pack of cigarettes. Those who disbelieve will say, oh, just cigarette tin foil? Sounds like a, a tin foil weather balloon to me. Well, it wasn't regular tin foil, okay? It couldn't be destroyed, it couldn't be bent. They got a sledgehammer and smashed it and it bounced off. This is Lieutenant Colonel Jesse Marcel now. I can't see Lieutenant Colonel Jesse Marcel mentioning the memory metal, which perhaps was a different piece of wreckage. Maybe he didn't personally come in contact with that particular piece. But he said the piece he picked up weighed nothing. It basically weighed nothing, was very thin, and couldn't be bent. We don't have anything remotely like that on planet Earth. If you can find a piece of metal as thin as tin foil, two feet by three feet wide, and you can't bend it even a little bit, we don't have that. That doesn't exist, okay? Even the toughest material, you can synthesize a piece of diamond. It's going to break easily. You can synthesize a piece of carbon fiber. It'll bend easily. Titanium, you name it, all right? They will all bend easily, okay? So we don't have a type of metal as thin as tinfoil. And this is not even regular tinfoil. This is the exceedingly ultra-thin cigarette foil unbendable. We don't have that. It doesn't exist. The memory metal is also a very interesting thing, but it's all hearsay, right? The Roswell crash is all hearsay. Well, David Grush was under oath. He seems to be repeating stories which do sound like Roswell. I'm not going to lie. But he can't specifically state because he learned these things under this top secret clearance level, talking with other colleagues that also had this top secret clearance. He can't exactly mention it without being in a secure environment. So a skiff is what David Grush offered to any that wanted to hear the details. David Grush said he knew the locations 
and the names of those heading these secret UFO projects. If you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Um, were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. And was this documentary evidence, this video, photos, eyewitness, like how would that be determined? The specific documentation I would have to talk to you in a skiff about. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and you probably can't name names, but what agencies or organizations, contractors, et cetera, do we need to call in to get these questions answered, whether it's about funding, what programs are happening, and what's out there? I can give you a specific cooperative and hostile witness list of specific individuals uh, that were in those. And, and how soon can we get that list? I'm happy to provide that to you after the hearing. Super. Thank you. It doesn't seem to sound like any of these extraterrestrials or non-human intelligences are alive. It sounds like they're all dead. Nevertheless, physical, biological evidence of a creature from another world would be groundbreaking. It would be amazing. It would be the most phenomenal breaking news worldwide. Everyone wants to see the proof. They want to see it in their hands. I grabbed this toy. It is from 1999. It's extremely obscure. I've never seen it before. I come from Area 51, I want your planet. That makes zero sense, but that's what this alien toy says. Listen to it. Do the non-human intelligences want our planet? Perhaps they secretly run the planet. Uh, I don't believe in these conspiracies, all right? But, you know, after hearing David Grush under oath, I am open, extremely open-minded to the possibility that there is non-human intelligence craft sitting in a hangar in a warehouse in some secret aerospace company somewhere. He said he was told by 40 different people. Mr. Grush, finally, do you believe that our government is in possession of UAPs? Uh, absolutely, based on interviewing uh, over 40 witnesses over four years. And, and, and where? I know the exact locations, and, and those locations were provided to the Inspector General and some of which to the Intelligence Committees. I actually had the people with the first-hand knowledge um, provide a protected disclosure to the Inspector General. Now, these 40 different people had top-secret clearance, just like he did, okay? I don't see this being a ruse. I don't see this being a joke. I don't see this being a hoax. Something bigger is going on. David Grush said he was threatened, and he does fear for safety of him and his family. Very scary. In the last couple of years, have you had incidences that have caused you to be in fear for your life for addressing these issues? Yes, personally. Okay. Yeah. I just want everyone to note that he's coming forward in fear of his life to put in perspective, if they were really not scared about this information coming out, why would someone be intimidated like that? David Grush is a hero, okay? So let's get to the bottom of it. Let's see whether this is a true story or not. I'm leaning in the direction of it being true, but I have to admit, I'm admitting this for the first time ever. My knee-jerk first reaction to hearing David Grush on the News Nation interview a few weeks ago, the first time I heard it and read about it and saw it and absorbed it, my immediate knee-jerk reaction was, is this guy a disinformation agent? Sounds too good to be true. Sounds fake. Why would he be saying this? Someone with such a top secret clearance going out and saying this? He's either being paid to say this or it's true. Him being crazy doesn't line up, you see? 40 people aren't going to gaslight him like that. 40 people with equal top secret clearances that have for a lifetime level been in government, the military, and aerospace companies, they're not going to be gaslighting David Grush on that level. It's not going to exist. It's not going to happen. There's only two possibilities. That he's telling the truth or... He's a disinformation agent, knowingly or unknowingly. And I don't think it would be easy to twist someone's arm to unknowingly be a disinformation agent. I don't think it's probable. I don't think it's very possible whatsoever. So I think we're dealing with disinformation or the real deal. Some people are saying it's a distraction from this or that. I don't think so. This is 
the weirdest distraction that could possibly be invented. Distraction from what? Hopefully some groundbreaking evidence comes forward because I want to get to the bottom of this. I want to know what's going on. I'm wearing my X-Files t-shirt because I'm a little bit of Mulder, I'm a little bit of Scully, okay? With Roswell, I was more Mulder. I, want, I wanted to believe. Uh, with Bob Lazar, you know, I was Mulder and believed at first, and then I got a little skeptical and was Scully, but I'm back to being Mulder when it comes to Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar is going to be presenting some new presentation of two scale exact replica of the sport model reactor and how it worked and the element 115 triangle you popped in there you know everyone's looking for circle buildings circle shaped buildings oh flying saucer so big they couldn't move it so big they just put a building on top of it it's an interesting take but I believe remote viewing such a location is going to yield you better results than just looking for round buildings. It's just a joke at this point. People looking for donut shaped buildings. But um, perhaps it landed such a long time ago that it's an ancient building. The pyramids. Uh, see, the only reason I believe I possibly found the actual S4 is because we were already given tons of clues and hints. There was another UFO so big they couldn't move it in the book I talked about in the last episode. Encounter in the Pleiades, an inside look at UFOs. And in that book, the flying saucer separated in pie-type pieces if you tried to move it. Which leads me to question, how did they get it there in the beginning? <laughs> it was a small flying saucer on the outside, gigantic on the inside. This is a Preston B. Nichols story, Montauk Project spin-off book most definitely inspired by Doctor Who. Perhaps that's why it couldn't be moved, because there's a football-sized room on the inside, and even though the outside was small, the mass would have been humongous and gigantic and immovable. Perhaps they have to flip the old holodeck switch off, and then they can move the thing. I personally believe David Grush is a hero. Hats off to David Grush. David Grush, I salute you. Um, I don't think you're a disinformation agent. I think you're coming forward with good intentions and positive reasons. And I look forward to seeing how this unfolds. It's too late if this is uh, the real deal. Disclosure might actually be here. I've been hearing this disclosure thing for decades and decades and decades. I've been skeptical of it to an extreme degree, but never have I seen a UFO hearing on this level. The, the technology that we faced was far superior than anything that we had, and you could put that anywhere. If you, if you had one, you captured one, you reverse engineered it, you got it to work, you're talking something that can go into space, go someplace, drop down in a matter of seconds, do whatever it wants and leave, and there's nothing we can do about it. Nothing. You know, I'm not like a UFO fanatic. It's not, it's not me. But I will tell you that what we saw with four sets of eyes over a five-minute period, still, there's nothing. We have nothing close to it. It was, it was amazing to see. I told my buddy I wanted to fly it, but, yeah, it's just an, an incredible technology. Now, is it true that you saw, in your words, a 40-foot flying TikTok shaped object that's correct or for some people that can't know what a tic tac is it's a giant flying propane tank it's been said it's probably the most credible ufo sighting in history based on all the sensors that were tracking it and then for us to get visual and to go against the naysayers it, it's something on the screen or whatever i mean there's four sets of human eyeballs we're all very credible of the six of us that were involved in the thing including the video every one of us is going to do 20 plus years in the military in very responsible positions so i'd say the world needs to know that this, it's not a joke. Whether you want to rip apart someone's testimony of this or that, that Tic Tac flying saucer exists. And speaking of the Tic Tac flying saucer, I matched it up exactly with the Battle of Los Angeles photograph, and the shape is identical. I don't think anyone in the history of any time has ever visually compared the Tic Tac flying saucer with the Battle of Los Angeles UFO because they're identically the same shape. It might actually be the very same craft separated by many years. It's possible 
the Battle of Los Angeles took place in Los Angeles. It was one hour of shooting the highest caliber bullets at this illuminated UFO in the sky. People died of heart attacks because of the relentless barrage of bullets at this unknown object. Elderly individuals, they couldn't handle the sound of bullets going off. The military never gave an explanation for what this was. It simply disappeared after an hour, but there's no evidence it was ever hit once, not a single time. So they shot at it for an hour straight. It just chilled in the sky, hovering, not moving for an hour straight. Looked kind of like a blimp, looked kind of like a flying saucer. It was hard to see its exact dimensions because it was so bright. There were beams of light shot onto it so they could better shoot the thing down, which they were unsuccessful at doing. The thing simply vanished. There's no evidence it was ever shot down. But the location of Los Angeles is very close to the off the coast of San Diego with the Tic Tac UFO, which David Fravor said looked like a propane tank flying around with no wings. So perhaps up close, the Battle of Los Angeles UFO looked like a propane tank. You know, it's possible. But it seems to have something on top. It seems to have a little thing on top, like the top of a flying saucer. Whatever this shape is up close, the silhouettes match exactly, identically. They appear to be the same craft, the same thing. They appear to be the exact same craft. So I was kind of blown away by that. Skeptics have said, oh, they're using the same old stock footage for this fake release. Fake release of what? David Fravor saw this thing with his eyes. The pilot in the back of his jet also saw it with his eyes. They filmed it. This is an official UAP video. One of the few official UAP videos ever released. And it was only released because it was leaked and then they had to admit it was real. But it seems to me there is a similar Air Force UAP video that predates the Tic Tac video. And that would be the Mexican Air Force video. Now, whether that was filmed prior or not, it leaked before the Tic Tac UFO video did leak. Does anyone remember this Mexican Air Force UFO video? This is authentic. This video is from the Mexican Air Force. I posted this video in one of my old videos talking about UFOs and some company claimed ownership of it. And I, I struck back, I was like, hey, this is Mexican Air Force owned. You don't own this. The Mexican Air Force made this public domain and they backed off. So you are free to share and search and get a better quality version. But this is pretty phenomenal footage. This Mexican Air Force UFO footage. It looks like a fleet of possibly what David Fravor saw off the coast of San Diego. A fleet of Tic Tacs. A fleet of the Battle of Los Angeles illuminating lights. They don't seem to have a super defined shape, but they're flying in a fleet. They're flying in a formation. The Mexican Air Force followed them, tried to catch up to them, and they disappeared. They simply vanished. But they're definitely not birds. They're definitely not balloons. They're genuine UAPs, UFOs. So I was always fascinated by this footage. And uh, until next time, I'm going to continue to investigate UFOs, UAPs, ETs, non-human intelligences. I'm John Rasmus Houston with ZD27. Thank you for watching. Be seeing you.